the Redeemer on the third Sunday of Advent. We uh, are glad you joined us for worship. We hope that you will use your online bulletin or your prayer book, uh, turning to page 355 in that situation, and um, turn your heart to God as we sing and pray and hear the words and receive the sacrament. Thank you for joining us. Because the Lord has anointed me 
He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build upon the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden cause what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept around in blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God.
according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one among whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. or part of it again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Rejoice always. At the end of a long and difficult and deadly year, how do you feel about that? Give thanks in all circumstances? In the middle of a pandemic? With millions of people around the world sick or having died? With economies in collapse in some places? With people isolated from one another, lonely and hurt? Give thanks in all circumstances? Excuse me, St. Paul, but it's a little Pollyanna-ish, a little sunny, Miss Susie-ish. I'm not wired that way. And by the way, I find it impractical to pray without ceasing, or at least I haven't done it yet. Yeah, you, my listener, Maybe of a happier temperament than I, arguing with Paul. But I'm suspicious when he writes like this. But I don't want to go so far as to risk quenching the spirit. I have my image of that. And by the way, it's the same to pinch out a candle. Is 
my images of old Scrooge in the Christmas Carol shoving down the snuffer on top of the ghost of Christmas past. Now, if I did that, if I could do that to the Spirit of God in my life, I would be truly alone in the dark with nightmares. Perhaps I should go back and look at this again and listen to what Prophet Isaiah says and what Apostle Paul says, because they're both filled with joy and convinced that the Spirit has come and is coming with good things. Now, if I believe, if I really believe that God has changed the world permanently by entering into creation as a creature but also fully God, and the purpose for this entry was to transform creation and redeem, buy back people from ourselves, and if it's true that God has been working to change the world, so nothing, not even death, is permanent. And if you and I were baptized into Christ's death and resurrection so that we could be the hands and feet and mouth and eyes of Jesus right where we are, and that is our understanding of what it is we are as the church, if all of that's true, then yeah, you can rejoice no matter what's happening. Because the bad stuff will not last, even if it feels like some days it will. And we have a purpose and a mission. And our life is to be like those, well, there's one down near my, it's a ditch most of the year, down near my house about 30 feet deep into the limestone, a little trickle of water most of the summer, but when it rains, boom, up to six to eight feet of water goes crashing through, renewing and transforming, and sometimes destroying old and dead things. That's the image that, of course, we see in the psalm, like the water courses of the Negev. In the desert, when water comes, it comes in a rush. So perhaps we need to think what it would be to have the Spirit of God coming into our lives in a rush. Even if we have fear, and even if plenty is going wrong around us. Rejoice, give thanks, says Paul. I suppose that means that we should remember to give thanks for the things we often forget to give thanks for. The roof over our heads, the food on our plates, the love of the people who love us, even though we might be in a situation we can't see them right now. We can thank God for our health, if we have it thus far, and our capacity to be agents of change. If it's only as little as picking up the phone and reminding a friend or a family member or a relative acquaintance that they matter, or perhaps writing a note to the same effect, or writing a check that allows the world to be just a slightly better place. Enough of those checks, enough of those phone calls, and you have the rush of water that can transform and renew. Now, if we thank God like that, Paul goes on to say, now don't quench the spirit. And as I said, that had me puzzling. How could I put the Spirit of God out of my life? I know one way that I have from time to time, busyness, just 
too many things that I try and do, and doing one thing after another allows me to keep God at a distance, to quench my capacity to hear the still, small voice of the Spirit. My phone has an annoying feature. It tells me every week how much screen time I have used in the previous week. I don't know if your phone does this. It's almost always in my view too much. But it also makes me, uh, tells me how many steps I've walked. So I'm always trying to reduce the amount of time I am looking at my phone or using my phone and increasing the number of steps I walk. And of course, then I have to look at my phone several times a day to see how I'm doing with the steps, which adds to the amount of time I'm looking at my phone. And I'm back to my busyness. But this quenching of the spirit, it can be more than busyness. It can also be allowing sin to take root in little ways and deliberately ignoring those little nudges that we feel when I should have said I was sorry, but I was too proud to do so. Or I knew I shouldn't hold a grudge, but you know I was right. And then there's another way I think we quench the spirit, either in ourselves, to ourselves, or in our families, to our family members, or in our church community. And that is negativity. Someone comes up with a new idea, and it's new, therefore probably bad, just because it's new, or I don't like it because it will make me uncomfortable, and I will immediately come up with all the reasons that it probably won't work, can't work, shouldn't be tried. If we're in the church, someone at that point will be tempted or will say what I call the seven deadly last words in church. We tried that once, it didn't work. Rather, could we not think about the steps we would need to take to make something new, transform or reach into our community, or transform ourselves? Today is the first day of the rest of your and my life. That's a truism, but it's also true. It is also the first day of the life, the next steps of life of my family or of my church community. And as far as our community at the church go, we are good and have a strong history of reaching out to our neighbors with social ways, with food, with help, with housing, with caring. But I would like to say, how are we about deepening our witness of what Christ means in our life? Or what about deepening our willingness to pray, to be more willing to commit to listening daily for that still, small voice of the Spirit, and to learn that in what is immediately appears to be maybe the wrong season, but if we are isolated, perhaps we have a chance to hear God speak. In all of this, my memory was nudged back to the story, one of the stories of the great evangelist Corey Ten Boom, who was a Dutch Christian, if you've never heard of her, who with her father and sister uh, hid Jewish persons during World War II in their house and helped them get to safety. And they were betrayed and arrested and sent to concentration camps. And she and her sister went to one in the middle of Germany. After about 18 months, they were going through a very bad time. And her sister and Corey were praying and they read this very passage from Thessalonians 
And the barracks where they lived were full of fleas. And her older sister stopped and said, we are to give thanks in all circumstances, so we should thank God for the fleas. And Corey went, no, not going to do it. I can't stand the fleas. They make my life miserable. Your sister insisted that they thank God for the fleas. And so with bad grace, because it was her older sister, she did. Many weeks later, as she and her sister had begun a secret ministry to read the scriptures at night to other women and to share in prayer with them and give them hope in an utterly hopeless situation, they finally overheard one of the guards saying to another, why the guards never went into the barracks? Too many fleas, I would get bitten. And so the very thing, Corey said, that I had refused to thank God for was the means by which we were sharing Jesus with other people. Maybe St. Paul and Isaiah are on to something. That's the keynote of our life. Move back to joy. Let us give thanks to God. And let us be careful as we move through the darkness of this month to not quench the Spirit when the Spirit speaks to us with that still, small voice. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father to the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me in reading the prayers of the people using Form 6, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are our love, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of cancer, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel. And all you seek truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, 
and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in His church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all of those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Hasten, O Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what you have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. A few announcements on this third uh, Sunday of Advent. Our Bible study uh, on Ecclesiastes continues uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, excuse me, Tuesday. Um, we are also collecting uh, still gifts for Blue Christmas for children in the Irving community. If you could bring an unwrapped present for a child between toddler and 17, uh, the ones for teens are particularly prized. The uh, first responders, police, and firemen of our community will make sure, working with the social workers, that they get to families in need. And you will be part of the blessing that they will call upon others on Christmas. I want to encourage you to do as some have already done and bring uh, extra food for the next few weeks. There is a lot of need out there in the community. We gather food and then take it to Irving Cares that make sure it gets to those who have uh, special needs. I also invite those of you who have not yet made a pledge to our church for 2021 to please consider seriously doing so. We are we have not received all the pledges that we. Uh, hope to receive and it makes it, it kind of anxious for us to look into 2021 not knowing whether we will have the means to pay our bills. Are there other announcements of day, time, or place that I have forgotten? We will be having, God willing, in the 
county permitting, and I know they will, Christmas Eve services, uh, both in the church in the afternoon and outside in the evening. And the times will be announced uh, this next week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty and ever-loving God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.